All praise to our Abba who is in heaven, the Most High Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is your brother L. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. We speaking today about the royal seed raised up from the mud. The royal seed, meaning the royal children of the Most High being raised from the dust, raised from the mud. In the South, they got a saying that I come from the mud, meaning I come from the bottom. Just like they said about the Messiah, they said, can anything good come from Nazareth? So Nazareth in the time that the Messiah was walking the earth was the mud. It was the lowest of the low. Yet the Most High raised up his royal seed, his royal son. He raised him from the mud. He raised him from the dust. He raised him from the place that men at that time said, can anything good come from Nazareth? And the same way today, they say, can anything good come from Chicago? Can anything good come from Los Angeles? Can anything good come from Miami? Can anything good come from Dallas? Can anything good come from Houston? Can anything good come from Brooklyn? Can anything good come from the Bronx, from Harlem? Can anything good come from Nashville? Can anything good come from the, all the areas where our people reside, from the mud? From the mud of Mississippi to the mud of Georgia to the mud of Alabama to the mud way up over there in Seattle, Washington to the mud in D.C. to the mud in the Carolinas. Come on now. Can anything good come from these places where our people reside? The answer is yes. For the Most High, our Elohim is the farmer of farmers and he has always been the Elohim who all the way since Adam has raised his royal seed from the mud. He's always been that Elohim that brought increase to the seed that was placed in the mud. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse five through seven. Here's what it says. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Let's rewind this. Listen to what he says in the last verse. He says, this is a great error and a great travesty that he's seen upon the earth where there has been times where the rich, meaning the royal ones, meaning the kings and the queens are forced to sit in a low place. They are forced to sit in the mud. They are forced to sit in the place where people look upon them and call them after a byword and hiss their teeth and roll their eyes at them and say, can anything good come from that low place? He says here, he has seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So it's a flip flop situation that he's talking about here where he is seeing the royal children, the royal seed being treated as servants. And he's seeing those who are destined to be servants and the lowest of the low ride on horses as if they are on the top. So this is a situation he's talking about where the rich and the royal seed, the royal children, the chosen one are in the dust and in the mud. But those who ain't even worth dust and mud is on top trampling upon the royal seed that is in the mud on the ground. Are you seeing this? I'm seeing this. So what the father is, is one who spoke through the Messiah. When the Messiah told us in Re Revelation, he said, I know your poverty, but you are rich. He says this to his royal sons, for he has made us kings and priests by his blood. And the most High has said about our people, Israel is my firstborn out of Egypt. I called my son. And right now the son of the most high is being spit on. The son of the most high is being lynched. The son of the most high is being called by words and hated. The son of the most high is now in the mud. We are the ones that are walking while those who are meant to serve us are riding high on the horse. Are you seeing this? And here in the scripture, he's saying that is an error for the royal children and the royal seed to be trampled in the mud. We are being treated as the parable like the Messiah said, if the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing but to be trampled under the foot of men. We are like those pearls being cast under the foot of the swine, trampled upon, where those who are of low degree are now in the high place 
Good has become evil and evil has become good. Light has become darkness. Darkness has become light in this upside down topsy turvy world where us, the royal children and the royal seed has been cast to the mud. And those who were low in the mud, who were meant to lick up the dust of the feet of the royal children are high on the horse, high in the chariot, high in the airplanes, high in the private jets. They are high. We are low. Good is evil. Evil is good. It's an upside down, topsy turvy world. But we know that the most high is the Elohim that can get everything back in order in righteousness, order and discipline for the royal seed and the royal children will be raised from the mud and will be raised from the dust. But let's go to the book of Ecclesiastic. It's also known as the wisdom of Sirach, chapter 11, verse five. And he talks about the exact same thing he spoke of in Ecclesiastes 10. He says, many kings have sat down upon the ground and one that was never thought of have worn the crown. So he's talking about the exact same situation as was spoken of in Ecclesiastes 10, five through seven, where there are times where kings are forced to sit upon the ground. Kings, royal seed, royal children are forced to sit upon the ground, sit in the dust. And those who were thought of as nothing, those who were thought of as not even a people, like the most high said, I shall provoke you with a people that is not a people. Those who were considered not a people as spittle in the eyes of the Most High have now been raised up while the kings and the gods and the rightful rulers of the world, the Most High's royal seed and royal children are sitting on the ground. But we are just like that seed that is dropped in fertile soil that shall produce a hundredfold, a thousandfold, 10,000fold and 1,000,000fold. The father is planting us. Although our adversaries think they have us trampled and down in the mud and looking upon us, jeering and mocking and saying, can anything good come from these Negroes? Can anything good come from them? But the father is setting it up where the royal seed has been placed in the mud. Like it says in Revelation that there will be a time where the Gentiles will trample upon the holy city. They are trampling upon the holy city and trampling upon the holy seed. But we know that the heel of the adversary will be bent. We know that the head of the adversary will be crushed for it's already been prophesied. It says the most high said to my sovereign, sit at my right hand till I make all your enemies your footstool. So those who once trampled upon us with their feet, they will become the footstool of the most high, the Messiah and his people. Yet right now we are in that time where kings and princes are in the mud, in the low place. While those who were not even accounted as spittle, a people who is not even a people is reigning. This is the situation we find ourselves in. But we know that the father will bring that royal seed and those royal children and raise them up from the mud. And raise them up from the dust. For he did it in our first exodus. You may be speaking of, yeah, I know brother L. He brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Well, I'm talking about even before that took place. Let's go to the book of Jasher ch chapter 67, verse 52 and 58. And let's read how the most high literally, physically, I'm not talking about no parable or metaphor. The father physically raised up our children out of the mud. Listen to this. It's going to blow your mind because it blew mine. Jasper 67, starting at verse 52, it says, And Pharaoh called unto all his servants, saying, Go now and seek throughout the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel are, and see that every son born to the Hebrews shall be cast into the river, but every daughter you shall let live. So Pharaoh then made the command to kill all the Hebrew boys, to kill the children, to kill the royal seed. Verse 53. And when the children of Israel heard this thing, which Pharaoh had commanded to cast their male children into the river, some of the people separated from their wives and others adhered to them. So after Pharaoh gave that unlawful decree or that uh, presidential law that he signed in, many of our people began separating from their wives out of fear of their royal seed 
and their children being thrown into the river, namely their, their sons, the Hebrew males. Verse 54, and from that day forward, when the time of delivery arrived to those women of Israel who had remained with their husbands, they went to the field to bring forth there. And they brought forth in the field and left their children upon the field and returned home. So would you look at that? The women, out of fear of their male sons being taken by the police of Egypt, they went and had their children in the fields, out in the country areas, in the open fields, the same areas where they used to grow food and plant seeds. So the women of Israel took their literal physical newborn children and put them in the mud out in the field. Are you following me so far? It's about to get interesting. It's about to get super deep. And we're going to see how we indeed are just like these young children. We are that royal seed that was placed in the mud, literally. Verse 55, it says, And the Most High, who had sworn to their ancestors to multiply them, sent one of his ministering angels, which are in heaven, to wash each child in water, to anoint and swath it, and to put into its hands two smooth stones, from one of which it sucked milk, and from the other honey. And he caused its hair to grow to its knees by which it might cover itself to comfort it and to cleave to it through his compassion for it. So these children had been thrown into the field, into the mud. And it says here that the father caused their hair to grow like in long locks. So their hair became like a cradle to them. Their hair and the, the locks that grew from the children's head literally became like a cradle to them. As they were thrown out in the mud by the mothers who were scared that the police and the government, are you following that? That the police and the government was going to attack and hunt their Hebrew males, just like they're doing today with COINTELPRO 2.0. So the women was throwing their children out into the mud. The royal seed was thrown into the dust. The royal seed was thrown into the mud. But the father had the same promise hovering over our people that we will be fruitful and multiply. And we're going to read here that the royal seed flourished and was raised from the mud. Verse 56. And when the Most High had compassion over them and had desired to multiply them upon the face of the land, he ordered his earth to receive them to be preserved therein till the time of their growing up, after which the earth opened its mouth and vomited them forth and they sprouted forth from the city like the herb of the earth and the grass of the forest. And they returned each to his family and to his father's house and they remained with them. Would you look at so verse 56 says that these children that was cast into the mud, the earth and the mud covered them up like it does a seed when a farmer plants it. And miraculously, the father caused these children to be sprouted up from the earth, raised up from the mud. The royal seed that was trampled upon by the enemy and thrown out in the field to be left for dead. Like it says in the psalm, when your mother and father forsake you, then the most high Yehovah will take care of you. These children were cast off, forsaken. They were treated like aborted fetuses because their mothers were scared that the police and the government was going to hunt and kill their Hebrew sons. So they threw them into the mud and the most high being the farmer that he is. He watered the royal seed. He watered the seed of his chosen. He looked over them for good and not for evil. And they were raised from the mud. They were raised from the bottom. They were raised from the grave. They were resurrected right in the eyes of their enemies. For it says in verse 57, and the babes of the children of Israel were upon the earth like the herb of the field through the most High's grace to them. And when all the Egyptians saw this thing, they went forth each to his field with his yoke of oxen and his plowshare, and they plowed it up as one plows the earth at seed time. So the Egyptians, our enemies, would go out to the, the field to sift the field, to sift the, uh, the harvest that came up. Just like the enemy tries to do to our souls today, like the Messiah told Peter, he said, the enemy desires to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And the same Messiah that prayed for Peter, that the enemy would not sift him as wheat. And the same Messiah and the same Elohim that looked after these royal seeds that was cast into the mud in our exodus in Egypt. He's looking after us. The same farmer of farmers, the same gardener. Whenever the Messiah resurrected, Mary thought he was the gardener. That same Messiah who is the gardener is looking over the earth. 
and he sees that the harvest is plentiful and he wants to bring us forth as that royal seed that was thrown in mud that ra is raised up out of the mud. For it says, and when they plowed, they were unable to hurt the infants of the children of Israel. So the people increased and waxed exceedingly. So the father had a heart for the royal seed. He had a heart for the children. And we have to have that same heart for the children. I'm talking about the young ones, the little ones. We got to be ready to go to war for these little ones. I have a four year old and I have a, a 13 month old. I'm ready to go to war for those little ones. And I pray the most high gives me strength. And I want to be that farmer that waters these seeds so that they are raised up from the mud, raised from the bottom to, to go and inherit the kingdom, raised from the mud to inherit the mountains. I want my seed and I want your seed and I want the royal seed to be raised from the mud to inherit the mountain, the mountain of Zion, the zenith and the apex of all beauty and holiness and power. That's what I want the royal seed to grow forth from. Yet right now, many of us are in the mud. Many of our people are in a low place. You personally in your life may feel like you're in the mud. You may feel like you're in the mud financially, health wise, in your mental health. You may feel like you're in the mud as far as your marriage. You may feel like you're in the mud as far as the place you work at, the city you live in. But we need to understand that the same Elohim and the same Messiah that raised up these infants of the children of Israel out of the literal mud. I'm talking about literally. This ain't no parable. These children was really cast into the mud. Just like these young teenage girls that get pregnant, toss their babies, abortions, toss their babies, throw them in the trash toss they babies, just leave them walking out in the street two, three in the morning. Nobody knows whose parents the child is. The same thing that was going on now went, went on then where the royal seed was thrown into the mud. But the same Elohim who did what he did with Adam, he created him from the mud. He created him from black mud and from dust. Let's read about it again. We don't need no memory jogger, but let's just do it for kicks and giggles. Genesis chapter two, verse seven, and the most high formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. I had to revisit that because it's nothing new under the sun. The most high has been raising royal seed from the mud ever since the first man was formed. And just like they hate us today, being the royal seed raised from the mud, whenever Adam was manifested and created from the dust, Satan also envied him. Satan envied Adam. Let's read about this. It says Satan was jealous of the first man and his evil thoughts finally led to his fall. After Adam had been endowed with a soul, the most high invited all the angels to come and pay him reverence and homage. And Satan of the greatest of the angels in heaven refused to pay heed at the behest of the most high saying thou didst create us angels from the splendor of the Shekinah and fire. And now thou dost command us to cast ourselves down before the creature, which thou didst fashion out of the dust of the ground. So Satan felt a certain type of way about having to honor Adam. Satan said, I was made from fire. I was made from your glory. And you asking me to pay respects to this creature, this man that you formed from black mud, from dust. And is not that the same spirit that's on our enemies today? They say, these Negroes are the chosen people. I will never serve them. I will never bow to them. Can anything good come from these Hebrews? Can anything good come from these Negroes? But Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9 says, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not Behold, I will make them come and worship before your feet to know that I have loved you. So ever since Satan didn't want to give homage to Adam, he's held that grudge. But every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua Hamashiach is sovereign of sovereigns and the synagogue of Satan will bow before the feet of the children of Israel and their kings and their princes will lick the dust of the feet of the children of Israel. No matter that they have pride and don't want to give honor to that royal seed that was raised from the mud. That royal seed will be raised from the mud and will always stand in Yehoah and in Yeshua and in the truth. For it says in Isaiah 
43 verse 1. But now thus saith Jehovah that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. That's the father speaking to his royal seed, reminding us that he formed us. He put life into us. He raised up that royal seed from the mud. He goes further and says in Isaiah 44, verse two through five, thus saith the most high that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Let me read this again. I'm talking about the royal seed being raised from the mud. The father declares unto us, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. One shall say, I am Jehovah's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob and another Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the most high and surname himself by the name of Israel. Isaiah 44, 21. Remember thee, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. So the father over and over and over again in the, uh, the book of Isaiah is speaking to his royal seed. He's telling his royal seed and his royal children that I will water you and I will raise you up from the mud. He said the same thing to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter one, verse five through 10. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And listen to what Jeremiah said. Listen to this, for this is the same mentality that we have. For many of us are still children. We may be in grown men's bodies, but many of us are still babes and children in Messiah and in the truth and in the way. Listen to what Jeremiah said. He says, then I said, most high, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Jeremiah was just a child. He was just a royal seed. The same for many of us. Many of us are just children in this truth. Many of us did not have a home where we were raised correctly. So we raised ourselves, or were raised by the streets or were raised by the television or whatever. Many of us still have childish ways. So the good news is the father can raise up you as a royal child right from the mud, right from the place where you at, no matter how messy it is. The father can raise you up as a royal seed right from the mud, just like he did Jeremiah, even though Jeremiah was a child. So this is for those of you who are children or those of you who will teach the children or those of you who, though you may be grown physically, you are still a child in this truth. The father can raise you up as a royal seed straight from that mud that you got your 10 toes in right now. Listen to what he told Jeremiah. He says, but the most high said unto me, do not say I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith Jehovah. Then the most high put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the most high said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I of this day set thee over the nations. He's talking to you, Israel. See, I of this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. So the father is talking to his royal children and his royal seed that has been trampled in the mud. And he's telling us, I've put my words in your mouth. I've given you the law, the commands, the prophets. I've given you the words of Messiah. I put my words in your mouth. I put my Holy Spirit within you. I've set you over nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. He told that same Jeremiah who thought he was only a child. He told him, you are my battle axe and my weapon of war. With you, I will cut in pieces kings, princes, nations, governments, everybody against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, Israel, for you are that royal seed that is raised up from the mud. You are that child. That's why we must have even more zeal with te teaching our children these things so that they can be raised up from the mud. We don't want them out here lost, not knowing who they are. So we have to have a special zeal and desire for our children, for our royal seeds. As it says in Matthew chapter 18, verse one through five, 
At the same time came the disciples unto Yeshua saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yeshua called a little child unto them. So the Messiah called a royal seed, a little child, a little seed, and set him in the midst of them and said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. So this understanding and this revelation is twofold as it pertains to the royal seed being raised from the mud. That means us as Hebrew parents need to water our seeds and nourish our children, raise them up and admonish them in the laws and commands. If you teach them the truth while they are young, then they will not depart from it when they are older. Do not spare the rod. For that same iron rod that we will use to rule all nations, we also need to use to rule our household. For the scriptures say, if a man cannot discipline his household, he definitely cannot rule over the household of faith and the people of the Most High. So it starts with us being farmers, mothers, fathers. It starts with us raising up our royal seeds, the children that come from our own loins that's raised in our household to raise them up from the mud to raise them up from the mud and all the crud and nasty filth that the world is trying to put in their mind and blind their eyes with all the mud of falsehood, the mud of false doctrines, the mud of sexual perversion, the mud of uh, racist, racism, white supremacy, the mud of all these false ideologies and idols and lawlessness. That is the mud that our children are born into. This world is a mud pen. It's a pig pen. But the father is able to raise up royal seed from the mud, from the slop, from the field where we have been cast away. We have been thrown out as dung. The same people that have been thrown out as dung into the field will be that royal seed that is raised from the mud. And even the Messiah, when he was a child, even the Messiah at the tender age of seven and 12 was one who had that spirit of being raised from the mud. And that same spirit that's on him is on us. Let me read you a little story from the gospel of the infancy of Messiah about a, a miracle he performed as a child. It says, and when Yeshua was seven years of age, he was on a certain day with other boys, his companions about the same age who, when they were at play, made clay into several shapes, namely asses, oxen, birds, and other figures, each boasting of his work and endeavoring to exceed the rest. So the Messiah, as a seven-year-old boy, was playing with these other boys and they was making animals out of clay. It says, Then Yeshua said to the boys, I will command these figures which I have made to walk. And immediately they moved, and when he commanded them to return, they returned. He also made the figures of birds and sparrows, which when he commanded to fly, they did fly. So the Messiah as a young child did a miracle where he created birds out of clay and out of mud. And those birds that he created out of the mud took flight. Brothers and sisters, we are those birds. We are that royal seed. We are those royal children that the son of the most high has put his hands upon us. Just like he did when he mixed his spit with the mud and healed the blind man. He has put his hands upon us and formed and shaped us into a bird that will take flight. Though we were trampled upon in the mud, he will raise us from the mud to the mountain. He will cause us to take flight when we, when we surrender to his will and he puts his hands on us and forms us and shapes us and transforms us and renews us and fixes us and adds on to us and takes away from us and refines us and builds us and breaks us and resurrects us and put his hands upon us. So that anointing, the same hands that the worlds were manifested through, that same hands that shaped all seven heavens and the firmament, those same hands are placed upon us and he will raise us up as a royal seed raised up from the mud to the mountain. All praise. We are that royal seed. We are those children. But with that comes a responsibility as well. Let's read the laws and commandments about how a disobedient child is dealt with. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 21, 18 through 21. 
If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones. So shalt that put evil away from among you and all Israel shall hear and fear. So don't think just because you are a royal seed that the father cannot destroy you. For the law is that a, a seed and a son, if they are stubborn and rebellious, they will be given the sentence of death. Just like John the Baptist said, whenever those who came to him to be baptized boasted in the fact that they were Hebrews, he says, don't you know that the most high can raise up seed unto Abraham from these rocks, these same rocks, he can raise up seed to Abraham from these rocks. So let us not be boastful children for we see what happened to our ancestors when they were boastful in the fact that they were royal seed, the father left them in the mud to get trampled upon and they never bore fruit and they were cast into the fiery furnace where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us not be counted among that number. Let that not be our portion. Instead, let us be that royal seed that is raised from the mud to the mountain and bears fruit a hundred, a thousand and 10,000 and a million fold from now all the way to the eternal kingdom coming down at a Shemayim. All praise to the Father. Keep going, Israel. Shalom.